the talent was there. You're tuned into the show. That informs, improves, and inspires racers everywhere. The Northwest Race Report. The Northwest Race Report is brought to you by O'Hagan's Cart Supply, Lebanon, Oregon. You want to win? O'Hagan's wants to help. And by True Tech Automotive, Hazeldell, Washington. Get your car, truck, or tow rig repaired the right way, the True Tech way. And by Scott Seal Coat and Striping, Federal Way. For over 25 years, whether you're sealing or striping, you can count on Scott. And by Southern Oregon's Karting Headquarters, Speed City, LLC. Keeping racers on track with quality support and friendship. You're tuned in to the Northwest Race Report exclusively at terrybridges.com. And now back to your horsepower and performance hosts, Terry Bridges and Glenn Lippy Tower. Oh, what is going on, racers? Welcome to another edition of the Northwest Race Report. It is BK Recap Wednesday. We want to welcome everybody to the show. Uh, if you're new to the show, we welcome you. Uh, it's 90 minutes. of We try to keep it positive and keep it real, and we do results. And we have, lately we've just been having results just because of the BK coming up. And now that that's over with, we'll get back in our groove. But we've got Lapping with Lippy. Um, we go, you know, tracking and packing with, with, with the loader, Jeff Eden. I mean, we got we got it going on here. So if you're looking for 90 minutes to escape and have a good time, this is the place to be. I'm your horsepower and performance host, Terry Bridges. Alongside me is my main man, Mr. Glenn Lippy Tower. What's going on, Lip? It's all good in the hood tonight. Looks like P1's Matt Streeby and P2 is Scott Keeney and Lori Fuller rounding out the podium. Oh, yeah. How about the loader? One scoop at a time. One scoop, scoop, scoop. No, do I like you run that. A, do you run a thumb or do you run, it, it, are you loading logs or gravel? Gravel. Oh, I always thought for some reason it was like lo- you were doing like log, you know, with the. Oh, He's in a the, pit. Oh. Go around in circles. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Slate. <laughs> yeah. I'm Fred. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Rock. I yeah, like absolutely. that. Fred, yeah, Fred Finstone. Boy, what a uh, – we got a great show for you tonight. We're going to be recapping uh, the BK uh, overall. We're, we've got some results from Atwater. We've got some uh, – we've got the missing WHR show from the 22nd uh, that we'll go over. We didn't have the uh, stats. A uh, big shout-out to Matt Streeby. For sure. From Strebfest Promotions. Um you know, the, the guy does a, a great job. I, I know he, he sends me the results every week. I, I love it. It's helpful. Um, he makes it, us look good. Yeah, he does. I mean, uh, it, it, it's great. So uh, my hat's off to Matt, Matt Streeby. Um, boy, because believe me, I know that's some work. I mean, just typing it in has got to be, uh, you know, a royal uh, pain in the you-know-what. He enjoys it, um, though. I'm yeah. glad for him. Absolutely. Well, our guests tonight are, we've got our Blue Line Graphics in the Seat guests tonight are going to be, uh, number one is going to be first timer and sixth place finisher, Kyle Wick. And we've got our winner, uh, first and only, other than Wayne Felt, she joins uh, that, that elite uh, one-man show uh, of two wins, is Brad Berg. So uh, those are coming up at 7 and about 7.15. So uh, look forward to talking to those guys. Um so, yeah, that's 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 kind of what's uh, what's happening. Um, how are you guys doing, by the way? Have you all recovered? It took me an extra day to recover for sure, but uh, I'm I'm better today. Are you? <laughs> I, I think I read on on Shane Biles' uh, Facebook page. He he put uh, today. I am going to be in uh, the the word is vegetation. I'm going to be in the vegetative state for one day. I won't be back until tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, it, it is, even though it's one day, I, I, I just think it's uh, the hype. The, I mean, it's a pretty intense. Oh, hey. Yeah. It, it's really yeah. intense. It's, That's the first time I've been there, and I was keyed up all day long. It, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, there's it just was. There's just something about the event that is just. Well, and then getting to meet the spirit. Some of the people, you know, more like Mr. Kimmer. Oh, my gosh. What a cool dude. He, I mean. <laughs> good Bob, guy. Bob Kimmer's a good man. Yes, yeah. He is. I mean, and uh, 
And he come right up to me, and I started talking, and he goes, you're on the show with Terry and Lippy. <laughs> I, mean, I says, how do you know? Your voice. I'm going, that bad? <laughs> but there was, you know, and uh, and it just just some of the, I mean, the ones that I met and got to talk to, I was, it was great. Yeah, it, it, there, there's, it, you know, for as, com- C and yeah, for as competitive as it is. I got Evan to say two words. Yeah, that's right. It, it, the people are fantastic for as competitive as everybody is. Right. I mean, you would think that, you know, um, you know, cause uh, what did, uh, we were talking, uh, Renee and I think Shane Smith came up there, you know, and Shane says, you know, um, back East. I mean, it's so hardcore that, you know, getting together and having a beer after the, after the races just doesn't happen. <clears throat> There's just too many secrets and this and that. And he says, so we're pretty fortunate that we have it to where we can, you know, we go racing, we go race hard, but then we go have uh, beers afterwards. And, you know, and, and a guy takes that for granted, just how cool that is. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean yeah. Lip, well, you're nodding. You, I was up till 2 o'clock every night around the campfire, so, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's definitely good times in the pits down there for sure. Uh, and you know, that is the fun thing that everybody can leave all that out on the track, whatever it may be good or bad, they can leave it out on the track and they can come around the fire and, and have good times and have good laughs and, and, you know, just enjoy everybody's company. That's, that's the best part. It, it is. It's, it's, it's really, uh, it's really cool. You know, I wanted to bring this up cause I, I found it today and, uh, you know, I, I've been, I tell people this all the time before we get into our results but if you're new to racing whether it's whether it's dirt track or or uh you know asphalt i mean this is mainly pertains to dirt but um you can start faster and learn quicker if you read this book um it's 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 written by a guy by the name of todd goodwin and uh it takes the new perspective racer uh into the karting world in an easy to understand perspective. Plus, it's got a hundred page manual that covers everything, uh, you know, found. I mean, from tires to toe in to everything. And it's called The Dynamics of Speed. Um, it is a good book. I know Shane Biles, crew chief for Renee Angel, says he starts his season off every year reading this book. So you can go to www.dynamicsofspeed.com, pick up this hundred-page book. It will help you learn, and it will it it it, it has a an absolutely exceptional section on tires, sidewalls. It breaks it way down, and uh, you'll have to read it twice. I know for me, a, a few of them I had to read twice just because if you're the type of reader I am. Um, my mind wanders as I'm reading, you know, and so you're trying to think about what he's saying and or, you know, what you're reading. It's kind of like, well, so but it, it's a great book. So if you want to take the curve and cut it down, this is this is the book you want to get the dynamics of speed. You can do that at dynamics of speed dot com. Um, great book. Oh, so I, I guess we should get into uh, We've got a lot to cover. Yeah, let's do it. I fooled you. Had a little Formula Formula One action going on there. That was, uh, by the way, that was uh, Lewis Hamilton. It just flew by. Woo! Never mind, it wasn't. <laughs> well, uh, before we get going, hey, Atwater, uh, Atwater, California. Um, that's close to Tulare, where the BK champ is, Brad Berg. But uh, they had uh, they had their a club event there. Um, and they had clones, beginner box, junior outlaws, and two fifties. That's not, boy, we thought we were maybe down on some entries. Yeah, they don't have very big numbers there. No. That's for sure. But uh, Donald Heiser won the clones. Jason Black second. Kent Stevens third in the clones. Beginner box went to Maverick Padroni. How cool is that? I love Maverick. Maverick. I think that's a good one. Well, I don't know. It could go two ways. If you were a Ford Maverick, you wouldn't like that name. There's two Mavericks there. A Ford Maverick. Do you remember those things? Oh, yeah. They were great cars, but they were ugly as... They were sort of on that Rambler-ish kind of look. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Maverick Shepard was second, and uh, Selena Little was third. 
Uh, Junior Outlaw went to Dustin Phillips and Coop Allen. That's kind of cool. Yeah, another one, yeah. Little deuce Coop. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and he was. He's the double deuce, 22. Uh, 250K went to Jesse Burks, Colin Larson. I wonder if it's any relation to uh, somewhere. Kyle? Spells it the same. And Koa Crespo. I would have butchered that one. Yeah, Koa. But uh, that was what was going on in Atwater. And then last uh, weekend, we didn't have any results from the 22nd uh, from the WHR show. Um, And I don't know what happened to that, but we'll have to see. I don't know if Matt Streeby could shed some light on it. But we have it now. Anyway, we got it. Uh, Kurt Light went to uh, Joe Constance. Anybody know who Joe Constance is? Uh, Rumor has it he owns a very large distributing company. Yes, and it's called Joe's Race Products. Good guy. And I just think that's so cool that he is actually out in the sport, you know, doing it. That Uh, keeps him sane. Yes. Bobby Frankhauser, second. Reese Wicker, third. Kurt Heavy went to Brett McGee. Jay Barnes, second. Matthew Powers, third. Pearl went to Spencer Constance. Alan Terrell and Levi Harless was third. Open with the Levi Harless, Alan Terrell, and Reese Wickard. 40-plus, Jay Barnes, Tony Bundy, and Jim Heller. Schoolboy, Cassidy Sunholm, my girl Haley Constance, and uh, uh, Kaylee Krause was third. Mini Cart, Brooklyn Constance. What a sweetheart, huh? Mm-hmm. Braden Wager, Jaden Roberts, McKenna Morgan. Quarter Midget Outlaw, Samantha Schwartz. Ooh. Got the females, Kira Z- uh, Z- is it Zystra and Jalen Hoppy. That's cool. Junior Sprints, Dominic Carter, Jesse or Jessen Jacobson, McKenna Morgan, and Carlin Kotcher. Boy, you know, there's a there seems like there's a lot of girls getting into this deal, man. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Uh, not, not none at all. Um, We've got Becca Clark. Yeah. Well, yeah. She's gonna be. She's gonna be. You know, absolutely the wheel. excellent. Yes. Force, um, force to be reckoned with. So, boy, what a weekend for BK wise. I mean, 128 entries was unofficially. Th- that's pretty good. That's awesome. They had 30 uh, 30 opens to, uh, qualify, and you know. I was just going through the numbers here. I mean, if you go through, um, let's see here. You go clear to 13th. It went a 10-10 was fast time by Ryan Diotti. Then it went a 10-20 for Stansberry, a 10-32 for Chase, a 10-34 for Hager. Kevin Bridges went a 10-40. He was fifth quick. Yeah, I mean, nice. Yeah, Brad Berg was a 10-44. Passanante was a 10.53, Angel a 10.54, Williamson a 10.66, Cox a 10.69, Zach Schmitz a 10.79, and Singleton a 10.91. Josh Cully went a 10.95, and it wasn't until Ron Bowles, he went an 11.03. I mean, that is, that's pretty, it doesn't get much more competitive than that. I don't think. Nope. I mean, you know, uh... Uh, I mean, even so, Stackman qualified. Uh, well, that was a dismal twentieth with an eleven sixty three. Um, Worley at eleven sixty nine, eleven seventy eight for Jeremy Brown. Case Hinkins went eleven eighty. So I mean, even when you were qualifying deep in the field, uh, it, it's close. You know, I'm just looking through this, and uh, six of the top ten. That was their first time there. First, first time this year there. Six of the top so ten. So, were you talking about Hager? Well, no, no, no. Are you talking about Bridges? No, Ryan Diotti, uh, Tim Chase, or excuse me, Stephen Chase, yep. uh, Kevin Bridges, uh, Berg, Cox, uh, all those fellas. Yep, uh, yep, Rusty, their, Rusty King. That was their first time there this season, and to be qualify in the top ten. Wow, I mean, come on. That's that's no practice like everybody else has had. That, well, not everybody, but a lot of them had. Yes, I, I agree. I couldn't agree m- more. But but that's why. Um, the, but when you're all in, that that's your difference. I mean, that, that's that shows that these guys are um, – it's you know, quality. Yes, it, it it is. And you know, I was talking to Brad Berg last night and you know, he he even said um he says, you know, we are amazed up here at the Northwest. I mean, everybody talks about back east and all that. He says, but up here in the Northwest, you know, um you get a lot of guys where the big guns come in and all of a sudden, you know, you got a bunch of no-shows. Nobody wants to show up and and run them. 
But he said, not in the Northwest, man. They, I mean, they have stepped up their game. And uh, it's, uh, he says, you know, this is by far the deepest field that we've had. Um, you know, I, I mean. I think the, the it's true. It was stated that it's a bigger, biggest race on uh, this side of the Mississippi. And I think the numbers definitely show that. I mean, yeah. there's, I don't think there's any other numbers anywhere for the UIS that are that big on this side of the Mississippi. Yeah. And, you know, another tough, tough run for Sean Carr. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the story is with big Sean. I, I, I wish he would get a little bit of luck. I mean, just a little bit. It'd be nice to see him. Uh, We'd all like be able luck. to get in there, and yeah, but you know what I mean. He he never. It doesn't seem like he ever even gets to. He gets there, and it's all he does is is just you know struggle, and and it's it's disappointing to see because I know he's a he's a quality guy. And uh, well, what about Shane, man? Pipes. Man, yeah, I, he struggled so much. I, you know that I I don't know. I I, I believe that's that's in the program somewhere i don't i i just think it's not sure yeah he's not i don't know that he's all in i mean you know he's he's you know he's got his toe in the the focus thing he's got you know the car. so you know when you get like that something's gonna suffer and um so uh but they yeah sure look, they sure look good in arizona boy didn't he though yep. i thought man you know and, and and in poor case hankins i mean geez that thing that was a brand new jawa and it was popping and farting and, you know, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. So, tough break. But uh, So, the dash was uh, uh, Hager, Diotti, Stansberry, and Chase. Chase wins it. Who was second? Stansberry. Stansberry. Yeah. Diotti third, Hager fourth. Now, it's too bad those guys don't really run for it, right? Because they're, they're there. They don't want to tear up any gear, right? I mean, yep. so Hager dropped out. I don't know what happened to him. He wouldn't and, start. Well, so, you know, um, and then I understood that they were still, they were working on it when the C main went out, which what he was, he was supposed to be in and then he forgot he was, wasn't there. So man, what a bummer. Well, that's why, it, it, what's up? I was, I was trying to remember at some place I read why it didn't, it didn't go out and I think it was fuel delivery, but I'm. I'm not 100 percent sure. You know, now, is that a Honda or did he stay with the KTM? No, he's back. He's on a Honda now. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. So that was the dash. The B main. Uh. Man, Yao wins it. Uh. Who was who was second? Bridges. Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Good run for him. And look who was third. Kyle Wick. Thumper. Yeah. Stackman fourth and uh, fifth was. Holbrook. Yeah, Hornbrook. Have you have you seen him run? No, I haven't. He, the first time he ran at Salem, he looked marvelous. I was like, wow. Um, the last couple times, not not quite so much. I I don't know what happened if it's on a different car or what, but he just he didn't look quite the same. Um, I was impressed with Kyle. Yeah, Kyle for uh, you know he's yeah. basically runs asphalt and he come out and. Dude, and that was, a, that was a brand new motor that Mike Collins put together. That was a, I mean, that's what you call a, a bastard motor because it, it was these cases and this, you know, it was a, I mean, it was something that he dreamt up that he wanted to try. Twin, uh, twin uh, reed cages on it. It had a reed cage on the barrel and it had a reed cage in the base. Yeah. That's some crazy stuff. It's, it's not been done much right. before. Uh, Ronnie's ca talking in here and he says that uh, he broke a spring on the compression release. Uh, so it wouldn't crank over. So it, the, basically, the spring on the compression release was hung open. So when he went to try and start it, it wouldn't make compression. Oh, bummer! Thank you for that, Ronnie. Yeah, boy, you know what? What will happen does happen, right? At the worst opportune time. I mean, exactly. In a spring, you know, Jesus Louise. So that was the B main. Um, you know, the C main. You know, here's another thing. I don't know that too many people know. You know, Terry Lawrence is laying in bed. And uh, Jake Mann was supposed to be in that 51 of Team 31. And uh, they had a little falling out, um, you know, talking to Kevin. He said, you know, we were telling him he was trying to drive it like a sprint car. And, you know, Kevin was like, hey, you, you know, you can't do that. You got to drive it like this. You know, well, and I guess it ended up being he said, well, you know, I thought I was pretty good, you know, but I guess I'm not. So he he took off. So he's, Terry Lawrence is laying in bed. He gets a call Saturday morning, and uh, Kevin White asks him if he wants to drive it. So he shows up and he qualified uh, 
He qualified 19th at an 1153 with no practice, no nothing. Um, never been in the car before. So, once again, Terry Lawrence uh, somehow, some way finds a ride. That guy, that guy's the. We should find out how he does it. He came with a car though, didn't he? He came with Tim. He's Tim's brother, right? Okay. But he wasn't. Uh, I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't slated to wheel anything. Okay. Then he gets the call in the motel room and says, "Hey, you want to drive?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could have come up the announcer's booth. You would have drove. <laughs> I would have tried it, but I would. But Lawrence would have been way better. I, I would. That would have been such a steep curve for me. No way. <laughs> um, so then we move on to the uh, to the A main event, and you know I just I, I didn't get a chance to play it because my stupid computer was uh, going on. But I wanted to play you guys a little bit of the uh, intro that I had for the start of the BK. So so here it is. So that was kind of the start of it, and it plays through that, and then it, then it, towards the end of that, it, it got into the uh, right before Welcome to the Jungle. It was epic. <laughs> I worked my fanny off on that thing, and the damn thing wouldn't read it. So um, I don't know. I thought that intro was kind of cool, but I, nice. I, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, um, here's you know I talked to Lawrence on the phone, and uh, when I talked to him via phone, here, here's what he said. He said, "Man, tires are a huge deal." All the years I've ever ran, I've always had to spend so much time maintaining my engine with the open animals and overhead valve engines, and I never had time to do tires. With the 450, it's basically start and go, and we had time to think about tires and mess with them. We were, we were, we are going in the right direction. Just a big learning curve is all. It was a W for us to be able to run towards the front. Yao would have won this race hands down if he hadn't run out of fuel. Guy can roll for sure. Plus, he has the best tire guy in the nation. And that was Tim Lawrence when I, when I talked to him on the phone. Um, so, you know, a big, big uh, runner-up finish for Lawrence. I mean, that's, uh, that. shoot, I mean, anywhere in the top five. So, it went Brad Berg, Tim Lawrence second. Who was third uh, loader? Renee Angel. What would you think of her performance? Smooth. Steady. Smooth. I agree. And would have maybe maybe had a run for it had she, had she not got you know uh, yeah. messed up. Chase was fourth. Uh, who was fifth? Passanati. Yeah, I thought he ran pretty good too as well. He did. Stayed out of trouble for the most part. Yep. First timer Kyle Wick uh, was sixth. How about this one? Who was seventh? Uh, Lippy Stackman. Dude, the Iron Man. He is the only guy left that has made every A main of every BK. You just stop and think about that for a minute. It's a tough shoes to fill. Boy, you telling me. You're telling me. And he got in by the skin, by the little hair of his chinny chin chin. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what. He had some guys move out and fall out and... Oh, baby, it was cool. All the planets aligned for that one. Yep, I was chewing. I, my nails were down to the cuticle because I wanted him in there so bad, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, he did, too. He's up there just bouncing around in the booth. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wanted him to get in there. Um, hey, and look at this. Uh, it looks like Yao, Yao didn't finish because of fuel. He ran out. He was eighth. Ninth was a head gasket issue for the Rocket. He finishes ninth. How appropriate. Uh, Williamson, tenth. DNF, he killed it on a on a you know on a one of the restarts or one of the accidents. Anna Singleton was she involved in the accident? That's what uh, I'm. Bottom radiator hose. Oh, that's yep. right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Bottom radiator hose. Kevin Bridges had some issues. Uh, he he qualified twelfth. He started or started twelfth, finished thirteenth. And here's the here is the sad one. Uh, Eric Stansberry. I mean, when that flag flew. And I watched him go. I'm thinking, and and I told you, I said, I've never 
seen him like this. I mean, he was flat ripping. I mean, good God Almighty, you know. But everybody says, "Well, we knew. We said it after we, you know." I, you know, I don't. All I know is he he was uh, God. He was bloody fast. Yes, he was. I mean, look at the heat races. He his heat races. He was just yeah. like flawless. That thing. He's got a motor from Planet Horsepower. I'm telling you, it's it's <laughs> it's, it's it's just beyond. Uh, and and you know, I, I mean. And then he spins out on his own, which which is which is, well, it hasn't been. An, well, it's sort of been the mo, right? You're 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 like, where 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 does that come from? You know, and I I, I my heart sank when because I was looking down at turn one, and Jeff taps me on the shoulder, and he says, "Leader, the leader." I'm and I'm looking, and I'm going, <coughs> excuse me, what? I can't believe this, and. uh I mean, I, I was wondering because you know the bigger the lead he got, the harder he was going, and I think that's I think that's backwards. Yeah, he was leaning on it pretty good. But he said that he saw Jan over there giving him hand signals, and and he was, you know, hitting and going like this. So it, he thought it meant somebody was right there. So he kept going uh, harder and harder. So heartbreak for Stansberry, who who definitely. Um, no doubt they knew he was fast, but, um, what, you know, would he have made it to 25? I mean, who knows, but now, but I guess that's, uh, you know, there's something else that was kind of cool about this top, take the top five. You had Washington, Oregon, and California. You know, all these, I mean, it wasn't just California coming up here kicking everybody. It was, we had. Yeah, we had some. Uh, Bird, yeah, Bird, California. To Larry, yep. Lawrence from uh, Napa, Idaho. Angel Washington, Chase, Chase from Pasanati from Oregon. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, yep, representing, representing for sure. That, that that's a that's a, you know, I don't know. I I I was just saying, you know, there's a lot of big races, whatever. But I mean, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that our BK is probably one of the toughest UAS races in the country. Oh, for sure. I'm not talking about Patriot. Some of the, you know what I mean. That those are those are tough too. I'm not taking anything away from those, but I mean to come here and win this deal, it, it's tough. It is. You know, it's it's not as big as the tracks back east. It's it's indoor. It's in the middle of winter. Sometimes it's freezing. Sometimes it's not. You know, I mean, there's just there's so many factors on this one that uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's not a gimme for anybody. Yeah, so <clears throat> well in, in junior UAS, uh Evan C was the was the man. That kid can roll. Even he caught the attention of Phil Fowl. He's like, Who who is who is I mean yeah, he I like his I like his style, yeah. you know? Because it was a lot like a young Phil Fowl. That's that's why. But Connor Wick was second. Daniel Watkins rounded out the top three. And, Kate go ahead. And Connor Wick did a nice job. He that did. main, he was he stayed with Evan. Yeah, he did. Was, Connor Wick is a wheelman. You know, it takes him a little bit to warm up, and then he's uh, yeah, like the heat races. He was, about, but that main, he was he got his groove, he got his line, yeah. and away he went. Yeah, ask uh, old dicks about him. Um, KT light and heavy. It was all Justin Beard letting him uh, everybody know that he was the new deal in town. Uh, Finch and Markham were second and third uh, in heavy. And in light, it was Speed City's Jeremy Brown and Mark Bryant who followed Beard under the checkers. Um, 206 regular, it was Hatch using his new snooker restart move. Did you see that? I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> and he got the lead and the win over Greg Norman and Brian Green. Uh, in 206 light, Billy Weber used his years of grand national experience uh, to beat out a super fast kid named Mojo, Monroe Jordan. That kid was awesome. Second time on the dirt. He drove for Norman in last year at the BK. And uh, this year he drove one of Hatch's backup cars. And he was magnificent. Um, King Kyle Keenan was third. In 206 Sumo, it was Hatch again. And uh, he bested uh, Wetline's Darren Markham and True Tech's Mikey Clark. Um, NorCal Clones, what do you think of them? I'd Good. like to see more of them. Good stuff there. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Uh Go ahead and take it. I got to find a cord here. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, the NorCal clones. I would have liked to seen more of them. I mean, uh, Villajante, Andy Villajante. 
he was uh, pretty much the class on that field. With uh, he won over the Passanetti brothers, and uh, Nate Fitch was fourth. Nate Fitch was fourth, and looks like uh, we got uh, the CKA Sportsman after that. It was uh, Steve Miller picking up the win there. Um, uh, Steve's the one that helped you guys to go to. Yes, uh, him and his dad. Yeah, both are the ones that uh, uh, basically got us our car and one, our uh, our extra spending money that got us down to Arizona for one, sure. One of the guys I work with uh -huh. went to school with him. Oh, really? And he'd been trying to get him to come down and race. Mm. So, Miller, keep it up. <laughs> get him down there. <laughs> He's going to make it happen, I'm telling you. Uh, so it was uh, glad to see that this was uh, hard work paid off for him and the ambassador of our sport for sure. Way to go, Steve Miller. Uh, he's been at it for a little bit now. And Scott Bile, ba excuse me, Boy, what is that? Uh, Boyle yeah. uh, was second. And then uh, Fast Ed Flett, my uh, vice president, came in third on the podium there for the sportsman class. So uh, glad to see those people down there having some fun and getting after it. Uh, and it's uh, Straby Speedway Raptors won, uh, put on their uh, first of two great shows on Saturday night. Uh, it was uh, Rich Terzel coming in uh, number one. Taking the, the win over Clint, what is that, Means? Means. And uh, Mad M Matt Streeby filling out the podium on that one. Uh, this track seemed to be just about perfect for those guys. They were uh, a real treat to watch. And they were, you know, boy, they were switching spots here and there yeah. and everywhere. Uh, great, just great racing in that class. Everybody's so even, you know, with the motors being what they are, uh, box stock and not letting them do anything to them. It really makes it for a great show. They're just uh, good stuff by the Raptors for sure. So what do we got next? Uh, Super Sport Heavy was a battle of supremacy between Dennis Flint and Danny the King Cahill. Flint, Flint made the last lap pass on Cahill, so he, he got the win. Dave Wooten was third. Mark Wooten was fourth, and Wade Big Daddy Bauman was fifth. Then the Junior 2 4 cycle, Becca Clark uh, took a win over uh, Brendan Gregg. Tell you what, been what, that's only my second race down there, but watching Gregg just between this time and that time, I'm seeing huge improvements. Nice. I really think he's he's going he's, he's gonna to be giving her troubles here before long. <laughs> and then the uh, fart carts was won by Double M. Ah, another one of our frequents on the show. Yeah, and Alan Waldo and Jamie Ransom was rounding out the top final podium spot. So, yeah, well, it was. Uh, that one, I, I'm just the fart cart was uh, was definitely uh, something to watch. You know, they really put on a great show this year. There was quite a few of them out there. They were pretty evenly matched and. Uh, you know, they uh, they all got after it and, and put on a great show, for sure. Making it all happen. So do we have uh, Wick coming up? We, we do. We got Wick coming up here. I'm going get, to uh, get this going. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. All right, our, our guest tonight, our first one, uh, it was a first timer. Forgive me, I had I lost my cord. I can't find it. I was trying to hustle and find it, but uh, Kyle, can you hear us? Yep. Okay. I hear you. Yeah, it's only going to be on one channel. Sorry about that, peeps, but uh, that's the way it is. Um, man, first time at the BK. What was uh, what were your thoughts on it, Kyle? Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of competition in UAS. So now you came with a you came with a I mean that car was I mean you'd been on it a couple times with another motor but tell us a little bit about this motor that uh, Mike Collins built for you. Uh, he's been wanting to build a 250 two stroke for a long time, and he was able to find some cases, and we modified the cases, and he he is his thing he. 
loves working on it. He builds it all. I'm just I get I get to drive it for him. Wow, that's that's pretty awesome, man. That that's really awesome. Nice kind of having an engine builder, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now your your dad wasn't there. He was at a, a a car show. How did the fifty one do? The fifty one did really well. It won. It won four different awards. So I'm not. I don't remember which ones they were, but. Wow, that's awesome. It did good. Yeah. So so kind of take us through. Um, so you got there. Um, did you, now you came down a couple weeks before and you had some issues with the, with the motor. What, what did you find with that? Uh, we, uh, melted it, the water froze in the water pump and when we went and started it up. We melted the water pump belt. Oh. So we came home and got that all fixed. And then we went down last weekend and ran it for a couple sessions. So we were able to get some track time before the BK. Yeah, for sure. So now you got to BK and you were there Friday night. How did how did practice go? Uh, we were really struggling with the to get the go kart to turn. It just seemed like no matter what we did, it still wouldn't turn in the middle of the corner. Mm-hmm. That's a helpless feeling too, isn't it? Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. You can try, but there's not much you can do. Nope. Get out of it at that point. Nope, there isn't. You just, hopefully you got your dump truck license, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what did you, how did you, how did you cure the no turn problem? Well, we started loosening some, we built this really nice, my dad built a really nice bumper with, that was really stiff and supported the body really well. And Chrissy suggested he runs all of his stuff loose. So we took him, cut some pieces out of the bumper, loosened up all of that. We chain, we moved, added some left side weight, and then we. The biggest difference was putting a hard left rear tire on it. Wow. And and would you? So what were you running? Were you on? Uh, were you on Vegas or Burris or what were you on? We were on Vegas. Mm-hmm. Yellows, reds, whites, do you know? We we were running Vega yellows. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Okay, so you got the thing to turn, and and then what happened? Then how did it go? Well, we got it to turn for the B main, or for the second heat. It got We got it closer, then we changed even more stuff for the B, and it was, I felt it was really good in the B. I just couldn't pass the 50 so then in the main it the go we put harder tires on for the main and it wasn't the right thing to do so it really struggled on the restarts after the long cautions and then just couldn't get the heat back in the tires after we had that long caution yep i think a lot of people uh, a lot of people complain about it. i know uh second place tim lawrence said the same thing we we went with a harder tire and and thinking it was going to not that be that many cautions and so yeah you know that's one of those deals where i mean it's kind of damned if you do damned if you don't you know i mean it, it's just one of those things that happens from time to time but so overall yeah. at the end of the day you were happy with the you were happy with the progress you made with the car yeah it was a lot better i could i felt like with the field that was left if we would have left our tires alone, we definitely had a shot at it. Wow, wouldn't that have been something? Well, you know, so you you've driven a lot of you know fast stuff. I mean, you know, coming up through the rotate, but then you went to the shifter stuff. W- give us a, an idea of, I mean, what is? Can you can you even compare the two, the asphalt and the dirt like that? I mean, you're running horsepower in both of them, but what's the what's the major difference, or what's the major thing that you've had to uh, adjust to? It it's fair like the difference between running the TT and Sportsman Open and running a the UAS is similar to running a Rotax Senior and jumping in a shifter. It's but it's more like running an Elo two hundred six and jumping in a shifter. It's a huge difference, but it's kind of the same concept in the UAS as the shifter. You you want to be able to drive in on power, and you have so much power that you need to get the go-kart rotated before you step on the gas. Otherwise, you'll spin the tires. So it's pretty similar in that aspect. But then your 
the straightaways are short, it's quick, a lap's only 10 seconds long instead of a minute, and everything's going really fast <laughs> on the dirt. You know what? I'm so glad to hear you say that, I mean, because that, that's one of the things I've said, too. I mean, stuff has got to be happening just at, I mean, you don't have time. If your mind wanders for a minute, you miss your mark. I mean, it's that fast, I think. I mean, it's, it's just, just got to be crazy. Yeah, especially with the engine made so much power. It would, every once in a while, it'd break loose in the middle of a straightaway. So I know it- you there, you don't get to relax in the straightaway because you got your hands full because it's got plenty of power. So overall, would you say that um, that the dirt would uh, would it would it help a guy if you ran it in the off season? I think it could, but it's fair. It's really different, but different can always help, right? You do something on the dirt, and it could change over into the asphalt but i mean you're staying in the seat and that's always important to stay in the seat as much as you can right now now shifter wise where did you end up at the end of the year i know for a while there you were you were like 10th in the country where did where did you end up overall i think i fell back some to 15th and then in s2 standings i fell down to fifth after super nap but that's just because you missed races right no, or for the national, yeah, but we just struggled some at Supernats in Indiana for the championship. Right. Now, is there any talk about you guys coming down to Phoenix for the UAS Grands, if you can uh, do her? Yeah, we. Mike wants to. We, I, the, I don't know when it is it's exactly. It's September. You know, have school or, it's September, yeah, but so. yeah. Well, I'm sure your dad would let you out for that. I mean, I'm sure of that. But, yeah, tell him Terry said so. Yeah, you put him on the phone. I'll get. I'll get you a note. Dad might, but mom won't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, overall, what was your? I mean, how, if you were rating this one through ten as an event, uh, what would you rate it? Uh, it and was, not by the way you finish, just from the event and the, all that stuff. It was. We had a lot of fun. It was probably an eight. Oh yeah. wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So, did you meet anybody new that you that you kind of wanted to? And uh... eh. no, I don't know. It, it's not really. It's just it, everybody's so helpful. It was nice. You, most everybody, if you ask them a question, they'd give you an answer. It's not like. At the asphalt, everybody, your teammate won't tell you what they're doing <laughs> on asphalt. But absolutely, and, well, that, and I, but I think you'll find that the tougher you become, I mean, you're already tough, but the closer to the front you get, you'll still get that information, but it won't be quite as prevalent. I don't think as free. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll have yeah. to figure read between yeah, the lines. Yeah, it'll come at a cost a little bit, but uh, yeah. Lippy, you got anything for Kyle? Well, what 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 stood out for you this weekend? What was the the most fun for you that uh, that made the weekend for you? Really, it was just driving with all of, just driving the go kart. Once it turned, it was just so much fun to drive with all the power it has. And you have your hands full all the time, and it's a lot of fun. So you were in the B and had to race your way into the A. Um, what, what, what was that like? I mean, cause you started a little bit back in the pack and you had to work your way through and, and you were working pretty hard to try and get past that five O, but he just wasn't giving up any spot. Yeah. Well, we started at the back. We made our way up into a transfer spot and then I got, I spun or some, I ended up at the back again towards more towards the end. And then I just had to, I was just trying to not. I think we had the speed. I was just trying to not crash at the first half, and the second half, once I fell back, I just had to go for it, and we made it back up towards the front. Yeah, it looked like you had better entry speed than he did, but uh, he uh, he takes up a lot of the corner when he gets there, so uh, it, uh, it made it pretty tough for you. You were trying high, you were trying low, and it just it, nothing nothing seemed to pan out, but 
I think somebody else uh, up ahead of you guys crashed out, which uh, moved you guys both up in, which was a great deal. Yeah. Well, you know what, Wick? He's a Bridges. That's why, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> there you Brother go. from another I've always, mother. I've always wanted to run, Wick, and I got to. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, good deal, Kyle, man. I, I'm I'm going to say, dude, like I told you the other night, for your first time uh, showing up there to to do what you did is is uh, commendable. Yeah, it is. It's nothing short. But, you know, I, it doesn't surprise me. You're uh, you're, you're super talented. So, hey, thanks for being on. We got Brad Burke calling in. Uh, we'll talk soon. OK, Kyle. OK, thank oh, you. Thank you, buddy. Bye bye. Your favorite drivers and people of interest in the motorsports world. It's time for In the Seat, powered by Blue Line Graphics. All right, our next guest. Well, he joins uh, some elite company because uh, there's only been one that's won the BK more than once. That was Wayne Felch. He did it back to back. Uh, but join our new guest. He 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 joins that group. His name is Brad Berg. Welcome to the show, Brad. Hi, Terry. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. Um, well, take us take us through, first of all, what does it mean to win this second one? Uh, that's a very special event, and as everybody who's participated in it knows, it's very tough. So to get one, I, I mean, that was pretty awesome, too. It's still a little uh, surreal, but it's uh, very special. Yeah, I'll, I'll bet. be proud of for sure. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, um, so you remember, so your first one was what? Like BK, was it BK4? Uh, the first one I came to was BK5. Okay. And uh, my first win was, was seven. Wow. Wow. Has it changed much between five and, and nine? Uh, the, the level of competition has has definitely gone up, and that's something I know I, I talked about with you some. Is I'm very impressed with uh, how everybody up there in that area uh, has stepped up their games. It's I can only imagine what next year is going to be like. It, it was a very stiff, uh, deep field, and it's just going to get harder and harder from here to win. A lot of people, it, it shows. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I, I don't know where you've run – you know, other than just on the West Coast here, if you've been back east to run, but based on what you do know running U.S., would you say that, I mean, I've I've said that this now has become probably um, one of the toughest UAS events in the country. I have not run back east, but from what I know and feel, I, I would have to agree with you. Wow, that's cool. So take us through, you, you, you got here on Friday, and, and, and what happened when you unloaded? Uh, we weren't quite as good as we were hoping to be. Uh, we felt like leaving the Holiday Classic, we left on a pretty strong note, and we thought we were going to be a little bit better out of the gate uh, up there. But we struggled a little bit, made a few adjustments. In the last run on Friday, we thought we hit on something pretty good. Uh, we were heading in the right direction. Uh, Saturday, we kind of lost a little bit of that, and I'm not sure why or how, uh, but uh, we kept fighting. I mean, I, I can't give enough credit uh, to my guys, Joe and my dad and Alyssa. It just – they worked their butts off, and it, it showed they never gave up. Um, it, was a, it was a struggle. We were okay in the heats. We were improving, uh, and we just – like you said, we kind of threw the kitchen sink at it for the main and thankfully it all worked out wow so when you were pushing up to the grid in the main i mean were your were your thoughts of hey we got a shot at this or are you like well I, i'm not really sure what we got a little bit of both uh, the the competitor never gives up uh I, I always feel like i've got a chance um i trust the people around me and and what, what we do. So that part, I mean, always feel like we're going to be competitive. Uh, but as much as we'd struggled, there's still that unknown going up to the grid. Um, just when it's all said and done, you got to leave it on the track. 
And so I, I was looking forward to the race. I know it's a long race, and it, it was going to be crazy. So you just you got to be there at the end. Boy, isn't that the truth? Yeah, and then, and uh, being – you mean you gained eight places to get to number one. That's, that's pretty much uh, – you figure who you had to get by – to get there and, and to me when sitting up in the announcing it i seen a lot of patience in your part uh yeah there's i mean there were some fast cars out there we had had some ground to make up for sure uh we we got help um I mean, we, we had a couple of fortunate incidences that were unfortunate for others but in general uh i mean we knew what cart we had and kind of the game plan we were approaching it with, which was basically basically going to be patience. Again, long race. It's, I mean, tough crowd, so you just got to get a, a spot at a time and don't take too much because you try and do that and you won't be there at the end, uh, both cart-wise and, I mean, taking yourself out or getting taken out or, or whatever it is. There's a lot of variables going on, so control what you can and, and manage what you can. That's that's how we approached it. Yeah. Well, you know, how about tires? I mean, that was a bit. You know, obviously tires are a, a huge deal. But were were you happy with the with the tire choice you made, or if you had it to do over again, would you would you go different? Uh, we were very happy. Um, it, it was a tricky track. It, it was hard to get the level of grip. Uh, we ran Yellow Vegas throughout the weekend at times that did very well um they're a pretty soft tire they gave us grip that we were looking for and showed decent speed with those but the longevity wasn't there with those uh we tried some Vega blues and they lasted but they didn't have the same grip level and uh joe pimentel i gotta give him all the credit on this one but we put tires on for the main that hadn't touched the track all week and uh they definitely paid off were they stickers then uh, they weren't brand new, but they were they were Maxxis Blues. Wow, yeah, and I you know and I, I don't know what Stansberry was on, but I I believe he was on Maxxis too. So, um, yeah, I want to say maybe he had pinks, but I'm not exactly sure. Um, but we we'd been trying to work in those Vegas and just wasn't really working. So Joe wanted to go with the the Blues, and I I trusted him 100. percent And I mean. Give credit to him. They they hung in there and they were there at the end, which is again what what we were out there for. And so the race kind of played into our hands. We played our strategy right, and thankfully, sitting at the end of it, we we came out victorious. Yeah, doesn't right. always work out that way, but you know, thankfully, it did this time. Yeah, right place, right time. You know, you know, and the other thing I noticed too was kind of like what Jeff said. I mean, you started fairly deep in the field, but you were one of the few that just kept moving forward. You never moved backwards. You just, if you if you really look at it, you moved forward, 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 forward. You know, there was no going back and coming up, going back. You were just moving forward constantly. That had to be a, that's a, that's being consistent, I guess. That's, that's what you want. Yeah. Uh, again, we we're fortunate there. I, I saw a lot of uh, coming and going fast carts and, we again just take it one card at a time and uh, take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves. It's really what what all you can ask for is being in a position to to do that. And we got the cards we could and got some gifts on some others, and then we uh, we were there at the end. Yeah. So did you get a chance? Did you talk to Stansberry at all? I mean, I I mean, I know you said uh, last time we were talking, you were just like, wow, you know, it was like. You're you're happy in one breath, but you're you feel for him in the other. Yeah, I talked to him briefly afterwards, and I mean, and I feel bad for that guy. His bad luck continues in, in that race, um, but as always, he had a a positive attitude, and I mean, he had nothing to hang his head about. They were extremely fast, and definitely one of the top three carts all weekend. Uh, you had Stansberry and Yao and uh, Ryan Diotti. Uh, Chase is always strong as well. Um, I mean, there's there's a, a deep field, and it goes beyond them even this year. There's there's a, a stacked field. Yeah, no doubt no doubt about it. You well, know. the B main could have been an A main any place else. Oh, for sure. 
I mean, what was the yeah, B? The B main was that was a heck of a race in itself. Yeah, it was the B main was Yao, Kevin Bridges, Kyle Wick, Joe Stackman, Hornbrook. I mean, there was more than that. I mean, you know, it's like holy smokes, you know. Yeah. Wow. Well, Brad. So what's next on the? So the trophy stays in California. It it, it must think it uh, that's where home is. <laughs> uh, for the last few years, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know the California boys are enjoying that, but I know as much as we are enjoying it, uh, the Northwest is scheming to get it back, so, which is good. It makes makes it fun, and you can tell they're they're wanting it back. Oh yeah! So, uh, do you have visiting hours for the Buddha? <laughs> <laughs> can those Oregon guys Any, come down time. and visit? Yeah, if they want to come visit it. It's yeah, a long drive, but anytime. <laughs> So what's next for you, Brad? Are you uh, you said you're going to do some stuff to get ready for the Nationals, right? Uh, that's that's what we're hoping at this point, anyways. Um, kind of got to regroup after that race, and we got a little bit of uh, testing we'd like to do just to try and improve our program. We weren't quite where we wanted to be up there. Uh, there's always room for improvement, and uh, that's what makes it fun and uh, and crazy at the same time. So I. I'm kind of waiting for the uh, UAS schedule here in California to come out. Um, if we are going to go to nationals, which we're hoping to do, I uh, want to go there with our best effort forward, meaning we need to run uh, some quarter point races and uh, the series if possible um, and we'll see how that goes. But hopefully that'll help sharpen us up for Arizona. Uh, but don't know when that's going to be yet. So um, just kind of getting things ready in the meantime. Right on. So uh, tell us a little bit more about your card owner. I, I know I got a chance to finally sit down and have have a meal with him, and he is an awesome, uh, awesome guy. Very uh, uh, soft spoken, but carries a big stick on the track. He, uh, how how has your guys's relationship developed? Uh, tell tell us a little bit more about him because I'm very interested. And I, I can't say enough good things about Joe. He's uh, just an incredible guy, very benevolent. Um, I mean, he's passionate, he's competitive, and he just he just loves racing and and having having this group that we do. I was fortunate. It was actually uh, right before the BK5. He called and asked if I'd be interested in driving his car, and of course I said yeah. Um, <laughs> and since then, we've just kind of. I mean, developed over the years, and it keeps getting stronger, our, our relationship, our friendship, and I've been very blessed to have that. Obviously, on the racing side, I've been fortunate. He's got great equipment. Um, he's, he's knowledgeable, and, I mean, can't ask for much more there, but more importantly, outside of the car, I mean, he's just a great guy, and, I, again, I can't say enough good about him. I've enjoyed the friendship more than I've enjoyed the racing, and I, I love the racing, but I just – I mean, he's just an incredible guy, and it's fun to hang around, and hopefully we can keep doing doing more. Yeah, that's that's the whole feeling I got just from having dinner with him and, and talking with him. He's very down-to-earth. He's, uh, you know, very likable, and he enjoys what he's doing. And when I talked to him down there in Phoenix, you, you guys weren't even sure whether you guys were going to make it up here. You guys were still kind of iffy, and, and, man, aren't you glad now that uh, – Whatever happened, happened, got you up here because he's like, yeah, I don't know. You know, we're thinking about it. We'd really like to, but, you know, there's some things that has to happen. And, well, you know, so I'm really glad for that. And uh, and he is a, he's just a tremendous guy. I, I, I can't get over that. Like I said, he's just soft spoken and, uh, you know, he, he just loves what he does. And obviously he makes some yeah, good calls. It's, it's evident. <laughs> Which which is nice to see when you can just be around somebody not even very long and, and you get that impression that just uh, speaks a lot to the character that he has and again it's just that makes it fun for me because we do have that friendship and uh, I mean he works extremely hard very intelligent and just a lot of fun to be around makes me want to yeah. move he's cool <laughs> he is he is super 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 cool well Brad. Man, I, I just want to say, um, you know, and I think I speak for the guys here that, um, number one, the, the BK would not be the same, you know, without your presence here. And, and, and number two, I mean, you're, a, you're the word champion from the, 
top of your head to the bottom of your feet. I mean, I, I you, you talk about Joe. I, I can't say enough good about, you know, the, the kind of guy and the, and the kind of racer that you are. You're just, uh, you know, you're the definition of, of what a racer is supposed to be. So I, I appreciate your efforts uh, no matter where you finish. Well, I appreciate that very much. Um, I feel honored that, you know, you feel that way. And I'm just, uh, I'm very blessed to be given these opportunities and I try to make the most of them. And if I can be, be worthy of them, but, uh, I'm just, uh, even after that race, I felt very humble. There's a lot of people that were gracious and congratulating and just saying nice things. I, I just felt very, very humbled by all that. And I, I just appreciate it. Thank you. You're, you're, you're so welcome, man. Well, we look forward to, uh, well, I look forward to seeing you again and ra- watching you roll again, but uh, maybe we'll have to get down there to Hills Ferry and check it out if we can. Make it happen. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brad Berg, thank you, man. Congratulations on joining that elite. Uh, there's only you and Felch, baby. That's it. Yeah, that that is definitely pretty cool. He did it in a pretty awesome back-to-back fashion. Um, yeah, you tell me how hard that right is. Here. You tell me how hard that is. <laughs> Well, nobody's done it before or since, so it's just, uh, very difficult. Yes, but indeed. But it does make us hungry for next year. Right oh, on. Boy. Well, we're we're looking forward to having you back for sure, man. <laughs> I appreciate it, Terry. Thank you, guys. Hey, you bet, Brad. We'll talk soon, okay? Sounds good. I look forward to it. Okay, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. How about that, Brad Berg? What a guy, huh? I mean, he talks about JP, man. That dude is... They don't get no cooler than bad Brad Berg. And he's not even bad. That just was just kind of the. He's bad. He's, he, bad, he's bad on the racetrack. I'll exactly. tell you what. That five is real bad. Bad to the bone. Yes, indeed. He's the epitome of a, of a driver. He's patient. He wakes, waits for somebody to make a mistake or, you know, he capitalizes on somebody's, uh, you know, misfortune. He doesn't push the issue. He doesn't make things happen. And, you know, that that to me is is big nowadays because so many people uh, push the issue or make things happen. And that's not always the best way. Yes, it gets it done. Don't get me wrong. It wins races. But I'd I'd rather win the way Berg wins myself. Well, you know, if you look back at his, his performances or any time that you've seen him run, but um, some may have only seen it the BK. But if you watch how he rolls, I mean. I, I, I don't even think I could – I don't even need one hand to count on the times that I've seen him in a mess, whether, you know, it whether he caught – you know, whatever. He's just never usually in in a mess, and that speaks volumes yep. for, for the kind of wheel man that he is. Absolutely. For as fast as he rolls, I mean, you know, but I got to say, going in, I, 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 I will say, I mean um, – my money I, I I sincerely thought Chase was gonna was gonna get this just because of his he ran the boop and he was, you know, in another zip code. Yep. And and he, he goes to Phoenix and although Diotti won the first day, um and Chase won the second day, o- overall I, I I thought Chase was a little bit little bit better. Um and so I thought, man, you know, being uh with the way he ran at the classic and the boop and I just thought 2017 might be different for uh, Chase because I know he wants to get this one bad. Um, that might be the only thing that keeps him in the seat. Right, right. And it, it was uh, it's just criminal to see him go through what he – I mean, a couple of those – you could just see the one where he spun on the front stretch, you know, he banged the wheel like, you know, dang it. Another one getting by, you know. It was just uh, – That's a competitor. Yeah, heartbreaking for me. But, um, you know, so – Hey, I mean, it was uh, that's what makes the BK the BK is that build up and the draw. You just never know what you're going to get. Right. Whether it's a sock or a Yamaha or, you know, all this running out of gas. And, and you know, that's kind of like BK six was you know, when Passanani got it. And then he ran out of gas. Stackman had it. He pretty much thought he and then lot comes out of nowhere. I mean, you just never know. You don't. That's why we race on the racetrack and we don't do it on paper because I had it. As uh, Stansberry, uh, Diotti, and Chase. That's how I. That's how I had it 
uh, coming into Saturday morning. Yeah, that sounds like a boxing match. And judge it, and Judge Glenn Lippy Tower had it. Eric Stansberry. That, that's how I <laughs> nine had rounds it. to. Yeah, but you know that that's why we race on the track because it it doesn't always go as it should on paper. No, no, and you you I mean your heart has to bleed for Stansberry though. I mean, you know whether or not we don't know that he would have won, but I mean you hate to see a guy that has a shot having you know have to depart like that. I mean that just. It almost don't seem right, but it don't seem right. But his spirits around the fire that night were well, and that's you know that that's all you can ask. He's uh, he's going back after it. <laughs> well, another one too that that had a quiet but impressive to me was Tony Williams. Yeah. Oh, for he, sure. I mean, he was he was we, staying out of trouble. That spin really was in a kind of a a weird deal. Weird deal. You know, like they said, it was it died. They get back in the pits, it fires up. So he would he had told me they he had learned some stuff there where he needs to shift down while they're under yellows instead of staying in right in gear. Well, you know, you know and I and I and I and, and I think if you learn something from it, you did, <laughs> that's a plus. Absolutely, it is. But I think we've kind of overshadowed the performance of Tim Lawrence. I mean. Oh, well, yeah, definitely. The, I mean, the guy I mean, was, I mean, um, you know, he said, you know, we were we were probably a tire choice away from maybe giving him a run, you know. And, man, he, you, but, he he's he's never, I mean, he's qualified real good and made the show, but he's never, he's always had problems. He was definitely the dark horse that day for sure. And, well, and he came through. I mean, yeah. But, uh, but you know, uh, as far as Williamson goes, he's he's probably the rookie of the year. I mean, this is his first year, uh, and, and he actually only the winter season in the UAS class. So how can you take anything away from that? I, well, you can't. You I mean, you know, he was a he was a top five car. If he wouldn't have, if he wouldn't have had issues, well, I think you should have seen Bob. Bob was beaming. Oh, Bob geez. was just over the top. He was this. He was so proud. Yeah. Even though this happened, he was so proud of this, and that's. You know, hey, when you're when you're, the guy that's helping you that like that, hey, well, you know what it. they did though is they made a game plan, and and they stuck with it. So many times you make a game plan and, and you get out there and you lose your mind and you don't follow the game plan. Yeah. He he followed it to a T, and they they had a a plan. They were going to go do this, and this is where they wanted to be, and you know that that's how you that's how you do it. I mean, that's you you take what's given to you at that point, but. You know, look at look at Stackman. He started 14th. He started dead last. There was probably doubts he would even make the show. And he goes from 14th to a quiet 7th. That's now, why they call him the Iron Man. Yeah, and that's why I say to everybody, he is one of the finest closers in the game. For that sure. guy finds a way to to get in and get there. Well, you know, and back to Tim think about in qualifying your your 19th you recover you've learned your whatever you had going on you've made your adjustments and you st actually start fifth in the a you know you you're you're when you qualify that far down you're you're behind the a ball at Boy. that point in time mm -hmm. so they did some fantastic work to get to that point and then to finish second just that's the icing across the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ab absolutely. I mean, well, look at Berg. Berg started ninth. Yeah, eight. Only other one that. Uh, well, let's see. No, nope. Kyle was. Kyle come up. Uh, he seven. came up quite a bit. Yeah, he had seven spots. Thirteenth to sixth. That's pretty good. You know, Passanante came up a couple spots. Um, Chase finished a couple spots ahead. You know, but uh, you know, my my deal too was I thought the five zero was solid. You know, Bridges was really good. I mean, what he qualify? He qualified. Uh, he qualified fifth, fifth quick. That's and, awesome. And I and I got a, I stumbled over there, and I talked to him a little bit. And he that what was really cool is he answered all my questions. Great. Guy. Whatever I was talking about, you know, wanting to know, he, he give me, he give me all the answers that he, you know. And then got to meet his dad. Not great guy. Great guy. I mean, both of them, I had a ball. After every time, whenever I left the booth, that's usually where I went was over there to 
talk with them. Yeah. And I just... Uh, from one bridges to another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing now. <laughs> but then I got that was really funny because I showed him a picture of the car that I work on during the summer months. And he goes, oh, I tried to buy that one. And I went to, was to talk about buying that one. He had actually been in the pits at Graves Harbor and was looking at one. <laughs> he was actually looking at our old car. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Well, so did, did, did we get into the Fart Cart 200 and stuff? For, Not yet. Uh, Not we yeah, only, we should probably do We that. only covered the top. Of, oh, no, we, that was the Fart Cart class. We didn't cover the 200. Nope. Not yet. Yeah. Well, how about Double M getting the W? That was pretty big. That was big. I was, was glad to see that. He deserved that. So. Yep. He's a, he's an asset to the uh, sport for sure. Um, sad to see him go. Yep. I, I'm going to tell you, if you, um, if you haven't seen the Raptors run, you're missing out on a treat. Those guys put on a – I thought they did an excellent, excellent job of putting on a, on a, a you know, a good a good show. Yeah. Yes, they, they definitely do. And it's uh, nice to see them on the bigger tracks where they actually uh, get a chance to trade some positions several times around a lap, and uh, that made it very fun. I kept asking Terry, where's Mom at? Is she going to make you stay in line? <laughs> 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 well, you know, the, the Farquhar 200 is now going to be called the Hangover 200. For sure. I'm glad they didn't give me a breathalyzer that morning because I was in <laughs> bad shape. I guess there was a, a few DQs at the scales for uh, – weight and uh, i don't think it was anything much more than that but team waldall comes out victorious they were rolling really they were uh, team clark was second team ransom jamie and uh um joe joe blg north uh were third renee angel did all 200 laps she was team renee rusty That's, did the same yep he was uh yeah he was uh what one Sixth? two three four no yeah. he was fifth Team Mulligan, sixth. Uh, team Gerline, seventh. And uh, and then, and then uh, you know, Jason should say, you know, be sure you give a, a, a big shout-out to, uh, you know, Jeremy Means in the flag booth, who I, I thought did a, a, a stellar job uh, keeping things under control and things under wraps. The tire's under him instead of on him. A yeah, exactly. Um, you know, he's Mike Watson, corner workers, Jerry O'Hagan, J.G. Francis, uh, Kerry Smith, Lisa Watson up doing the scoring. Um, Blaney for just hanging out and being extra hands where he needed them. And uh, so it was uh, it was awesome. Casey Mendez. So it, that was uh, good good stuff. And then, you know, he, he thanked uh, Rob Doc Lambert. Oh, for sure. Ronnie great, Cox, Max Streeby for all the help and uh, organizing. So, and it says, thank you and see you at BK10. Can you imagine that? We're planning on BK10. I'm already looking forward to it. Yep. It's a, you know, I always say I do a lot of races over the summer and different ones, you know, but this is the, this is the one. I mean, this is, this is, for me, this is the race of races. It's just, um. I don't even know what it is about it. It's just, God, you get there, you can cut it with a knife. Um, boy. It's, it's definitely it's, our yeah. biggest winter race, you know, around. Uh, I'm glad that Salem has it now. If we were to try and hold this at Oakwood where it all started, it wouldn't go over nearly as well as it does now. Uh, they give us a great surface down there. Uh, the crew does a great job. It, it it pains me that some people went away from the weekend unhappy, saying they wouldn't come back. That's not the way we need to support our wintertime racing, folks. Uh, this is our only place, really, to get some wintertime racing in. If you want to do uh, sand and spray, go ahead and go up to Monroe. If you want to do some true side-by-side -side racing, on a surface that uh, is unmatched in the wintertime. You know, Salem is it. And whether you had a good time or a bad time, whether your experience was, uh, you know, not what you wanted or not, it's it's what we have and we need to support it. You know, it, it needs to continue. If this goes away, we're all going to be sitting on our hands for five months, and I don't want to do that. So. Well, you know, and, and it's one thing, you know, you get DQ'd over, but, you know, if you're light, I mean, whose fault is that? I mean, it's nobody's fault but your own. I mean, you, you can't blame you, you can't blame 
can't blame the, the track for that. I mean, I, I don't, you know, but but on Sunday, UAS was uh, Jared Storr, Singleton, and uh, Tyler Weber. Nice. There, was, there was three that, that stayed. Well, I, and uh, I feel sorry. That's That's got to be a hard thing to drive when it won't turn. Uh, yeah. It, well, it's turning compared to what it used to do, if you can imagine that. Well, I was, when I left, I was standing down there and, and well, one and two, and it's just Ke- – Ke- it, Kevin White went over there and said, Milton's, Milton's ticked off at us. Well, how come? Because we went over there with a torch, and we cut that bar out of there, and he was madder than a hornet, I guess. But <laughs> but 206 Light uh, was uh, Monroe Jordan getting it done. Kyle Keenan and Jasmine Hildebrand were nice. the top three. In uh, 206 regular, it was Brian Green, Greg Normandon, uh, Brent Meyer, uh, Michael Reed, and Justin DeMars. Um, let's see here. Sumo was Mikey Clark, uh, KT Heavy. It was uh, it was actually Phil Fowl, but he was light. He just said, "I I don't care. I'm just I'm just coming to run." He ran good. He looked <laughs> he looked really good. People, the man is almost seventy years old. That's correct. And he was so smooth out there. It was crazy. And that, you, that's foul. Yep. I mean, you, in his day, I mean, and the only reason why I can say that is because I got to witness it. But he, he is he's the deal. But uh, Jeremy Brown got the win. Um, and then it was uh um. Who did I have there? Do I have to say uh, Cully, Hood, Kravitz? Oh no, that was uh, that was a Raptor. That was no, that was uh, no, that was uh, that was right. Oh Yamaha. On uh, Sunday, yeah, Wade Bauman wins a uh, Super Sport Heavy Junior Two. It was Becca Clark over Brennan Gregg. Um, so yeah, Sunday was a little, you know, a little. Everything, everybody was just out of it. Uh, yeah. I hope Brian Williamson's okay. He somebody said he turned around backwards, and when he hit the wall, he his head. You know, snap back and hit the wall. He did smack the wall. Yeah, that's what uh, Bob was saying. Yeah. yeah, he said he was talking since sitting over to trailer. So, well, but still, you still got to watch. Oh yeah, because, they were going to watch him. Yeah, you know, and and I'll bet you, I'll guarantee you, Jason doesn't let the quads show up and run anymore ever when they're not on the docket. Oh my god, that, that was bad. That guy was showing he, off, and he got he that thing put him to the deck. Yep, yeah, Joey Chitwood was showing off. Yep, on one wheel. And then he comes around the corner, and the thing bites, and, I mean, it fired him off. It was like thing. a catapult. I just put him whoop, flat on his back like it was like. And somebody somebody said, yeah, that's all part of the show. No, I, I, <laughs> I said, he's all right. That's all part of the show. I, I didn't realize he was hurt. <laughs> you know, I was kind of like, okay, I'm an inch tall now. but um, <laughs> Yeah, he was. <laughs> That guy hit hard. He did hit hard. He got up and on one knee, and he was like, uh, yes, I have a Caesar salad. And uh, he was kind of – there were some Tweety Birds going around there. You know, something else that should be – that some people should be thankful for was those giveaways before the – Oh, gosh. On, at the driver's Oh, room. yeah. Hang on. We're going to get into that. Let me uh, – we'll take a quick break here, and we'll be right back with that to close it out. three most expensive things you'll do in your life are buy a house, educate your kids, and go racing. What you don't need is another expense, and that's why you take your car and tow rigs to True Tech Automotive to ensure that they are maintained and repaired the right way with the right parts at the right price. And how's this for right? Extended to all racers is the In the Family 25% discount off of all preventative maintenance and repair labor. All you have to do is use the discount code NWRR to say now that's right get it done the right way the true tech way true tech automotive 6900 northeast highway 99 hazeldale washington 360-571-2302 hey racers glenn tower here from the northwest race report you know with the invention of the internet our local go-kart shops have really taken a huge blow one of the great go-kart shops out there is o'hagan's Carts and Supplies. They offer a great selection of carts, parts, and service. We all want to win, and O'Hagan's wants to help. O'Hagan's Carts and Supplies, Lebanon, Oregon. Racing. It's preparation. It's focus. It's attention to detail. And when you try to take shortcuts, it shows. At Speed City, Southern Oregon's karting headquarters, distributor for Ultramax, Legend, QRC, Bell helmets and K1 race gear, they don't roll like that. 
Speed City is committed to roll the way champions roll by keeping racers on track with knowledge, integrity, and performance. No shortcuts, no negativity, no other motives. You don't just have their word on it, you've got their name on it. So get back to having fun and get to calling Speed City. Speed City, LLC, keeping racers on track with quality service and friendship. Uh, I'm so proud of those guys. They, uh, they're putting good drivers in their carts and they're, they're making some, uh, good laps out there. Yeah. You know, speed city is, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, you know, they, I showed up there and, and, uh, you know, there's Sean right over there and, and, uh, he, he shows me that banner, you know, it's got the crisscross applesauce on there. <laughs> uh, that's actually, you know, really, really cool. And, uh, did it have a pork chop too? No, no pork chop. <laughs> you got to do something special to get the pork chop. <laughs> but there was a lot of crisscrossing oh, going on guys. on Sunday. Boy, that one you were De- just yeah, DeMars and uh, Monroe Jordan were were crisscrossing and apple saucing, baby. Every corner. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That was really cool. So uh, yeah, it was awesome. I mean, uh, the whole the whole deal was up. Awesome. You know, and and some of you may have noticed on Facebook, I I. I you know, I was just sitting here thinking about it, you know, and looking over the the past season, the last couple seasons, and I just decided, you know, the Northwest Race Report is going to give Jason Suchic the Promoter of the Year award. For us, anyway, I, I you know, know that the the guy struggles. He, he worries about stuff. You know, I mean, that's a big deal. You know, he, he worries about the show going off right, trying to do good things, you know. You know, we, we all beat him up. We all can say, you know, geez, you know, I didn't like this. I, didn't. but until you get into the logistics of what Walk goes a on, mile there, in his shoes, man, dude. I mean, and everybody's got the answer, but when it, but when the job opening's there, there's there's nobody running to it. So, I just went ahead and you know, so the Northwest Race Report, I just felt that you know, I, he deserves it. Now, I'm not saying that that's not taking away for anything from Galen and Carlos Stewart, who were excellent promoters on the Ford Focus series. I'm just talking, you know, karting wise and whatnot. Um, Jason Suchic deserved that award. I mean, he, you know, he's got the sport's best interest in mind. He's got the racer's best interest in mind. Um, you know, he cares about a quality show. He doesn't like it when people are upset. I mean, and he takes the time to listen to both sides when there's a, a gripe. He doesn't just toss somebody. There's, you know, he reasons it out before he says, okay, here's what we're going to do. Like the deal with Clark. Remember that? And Weber. You know, he find them both because that was that was the right thing, you know, right thing, I guess the right thing to do. So he looked at both sides and, you know, doesn't hold a grudge. And it, once it was over, it was over. But um, that's just the kind of guy he is. So. The job he has is not an easy job. You know of all people. The whether it be a, a promoter or the race director, either one, nobody wants that job, believe me. And when you have both of them to do, it's not fun. Uh you know, I put my hands on his shoulders, I don't know, five or six times that that day, and I just kept telling him, Head up, you're doing a great job. Head up, you're doing a great job. You know, because you just don't hear that enough. And anybody that has a complaint about how the weekend goes, try bolting those headphones on and spending a day in his shoes. Because I guarantee you, you will be pulling out hair and toenails when you're done. Because it's not fun. It's not easy. It's not a job that anybody wants. And he handles it very, very well. He does, you know, and, and a lot of it's not even carding. 
you know, it's a, the breaker doesn't work. You know, I'll call the, Hey, Jason, we don't have any power, dude. What's what, you know, what's up? Uh, Hey, I need your hotspot. Uh, you know, uh, the, the snack shack, you know, the, 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 look at the water pipe broke or yep. something in the bathroom. You know, mm-hmm. he, he's working. I mean, he's not even doing stuff related. He's working on the damn building, you know, putting out fire. And then he's got, you know, then he's over there worried. Some guy's worried about, you know, he got a little nudge and he wants to, uh, you know, to talk about, I mean, it's like, you know, you're going to turn the lights off at 11 o'clock. Really? I'm not done working on my junk yet. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's just, uh, it's just crazy. So yeah. I, um, it's like I said in the post, you know, is he perfect? No, he's not. But shame on anybody that thinks he should be because, uh, he, he actually, he's, he's as close to perfect as you're probably going to get. He did a great job. He did do a great job. So that, that's, that's pretty awesome. But, uh, Hey, and I wanted to say too, how about Lori Fuller getting fourth? She got fourth in uh I had to laugh at her that one time. I come down out of the stands there and she's bouncing around and I says, What's with you? I didn't get lapped. <laughs> she was I mean, and that's that I mean, that was an accomplishment for her for the weekend. And she looked better and better and better. I think by getting that new nose on the car, she can see now. Yeah, I Big mean, help. yeah. So I didn't get lapped, and I got fourth. That's like a double whammy, you know. Yeah. Woo-hoo, happy day. Yeah. So that's uh, that, that's she. I, she actually liked our hat too. Yeah. Nice. Oh, she did. Yeah. Well, you gave her. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, you know, there was one of the things that got to me when I was, I was walking around through there, and I, and Renee and Sean explained all the stuff to me there, but with the tire, machine basically, that. My God, it takes a separate trailer to haul the stuff they need to do, just their tires. Oh, you got man. a tire washer. I mean, it, your tires come off, they go in the washer. And then they come out of the washer, they go over here, and then they go up into the heater. And then you start putting prep on it up in the heater, and it's like, oh, my God. And, and the, you know what? And it's tame. I mean, it's tame out here compared to how they do it back east. I mean, it, you got a little education there. Dude, I, I oh, mean, yeah. that's I mean, a I, whole nother science. I bet I was just sitting there, I mean, and, and she took the time. She took the time to explain what she was doing and how, and the reasons why, and not at I, you know. And I was, I told him, I says, "Well, I'm gonna try to get up to Deming one of these days. If I do, I'm coming up and sitting the pitch with you guys. Hey, you're more than welcome. Come on, yeah, good yeah. peeps. That, that that tired thing is a is a whole. You know, Tim Lawrence was saying too. You know, it's a, it's such a big deal. It's, it's it's sad in a way because as you move up, that's not allowed. So. You know, uh, the the prep is basically where it's at. I mean, it's 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 in the in this car. I mean, when you move up to cars and you do all that, you know, that stuff's not allowed. So you're going to have to learn, you know, how to adjust on the car a little bit. But nonetheless, it's here to stay and there's nothing nothing that anybody's going to do about it. So it's 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 senseless to even. But it is a science. I mean, I'm nor- th- I'm thankful. Right. Thanks. Normally go you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, how much cross weight? I mean, I got this much bite. You know, let's put two rounds in, take two rounds. You know, they come in and said, oh, I have 11 ounces on the inside and and 13 on the outside. That should have had, you know, 10 on the inside. And, you know, I mean, it's crazy. It, it's just crazy. But, yeah. And I, I mean, the overall weekend, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from you on what to do in the booth. I think I can be a little more efficient from now on. Nice. It was. It's actually the first time there. I didn't know what I was doing. I just you're like a deer in the headlights. Oh know. my god! And then, then once we got started, and he explains a little bit to me, it made sense. And I think towards the end, we was actually doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, Sounded it was good. Yeah, I, 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 I can tell you, man. I, I was at my wits' end over this over this flash drive thing. And so, if you hadn't have been there. I mean, you were my, uh, you were, you know, with Lippy busy down there. I, you were my saving grace because I was, uh, I was about ready to lose my mind. I mean, it was like, I just couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. He's trying to work on that and we're doing qualifying. So I'm going through the sheets. I'm handing the sheet to where he knows who's up, gets their sponsor stuff and he flips it down. And I go to the next one and he's trying to work on the flash drive, but yet he's trying to announce what's going on out there. You know, yeah, I was so disappointed because I knew, you know, I wanted to do it for Rocket. He really likes that that part of it, you know. And oh. so I had that thing all set up, you know, and I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, it's like, ugh. So those are the times when you go, if only I had money, right? I mean, <laughs> I would just go get what I need and it would be new and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But, um, you know, so so ends the story. But uh, Well, hey, I got a fast fact. Ooh, another nice. one. Well, let's tell them really quick what's coming up this weekend. 
Oh. Cage, cage carts and cars are back. Welcome back to the uh, cage carts, micros, midgets, dwarfs, mini stocks, and pro fours. Open practice Friday, 6 to 9. And a reminder that all cars, even the mini stocks, you have to have a receiver. Do not show up without one. And the driver's meeting are mandatory. So if you're from Roseburg or you're a newbie, make sure you're at the driver's meeting. Otherwise, you will start at the rear in your heat race. Uh, and registration, they'll have it up there. It's 8 to 10 on the day show. And, of course, uh, 3.30 to 4.30 on the night show. And it says the Speedway guys put a bunch of tire dope in the dirt this past weekend, which I'm sure will benefit some. So I think the track should be awesome. So cage carts are there for their two-day show this weekend. Tire dirt. Race fact, go ahead. Well, kind of kind of going off of what we started with last week with the Dukes of Hazard. This time we're going to go to the Blues Brothers. Okay. Okay. How many on the original Blues Brothers idea how many cars they wrecked in that movie? Wow. I don't know. Six. 103. Wow. Blues Brothers 2000. When they did the remake. How many do you think they wrecked? 50. 104. Wow. Wow. And remember when they were going down North Wacker Drive with the Chicago PD trace chasing them? They bought 60 old cop cars at $400 a piece, retroed them with uh, frames that would handle the beating that they took. And so that was another, I mean, so you figure the, you know, 60 of those was actually cop cars that could handle what was going on. That's a lot of carnage. Man, that 103 is. cars? Wow. Wow. So there's my fast fact for the week. So they must have had 103 stunt drivers for all of them. I tell you what, that when they do that, where they're going underneath that bridge down through there, and they're wrecking, it, yeah, there had to be. I mean, that Ridge Joe ain't going to like that one. Where it takes the rips the top off? <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you better get your timing down right, because if you miss... Yeah, you in trouble. You, you more than in trouble, you dead. <laughs> but, uh, hey, you guys, thanks for tuning in. It was a successful BK, I would say. Definitely. Um, big shout out to all the competitors, whether you, you know, won or did good or had problems, it doesn't matter. Um, you were part of one of the greatest shows on dirt that I, you know... I'm just proud to be a part of. Um, big shout out to Joe Stackman for making his record breaking ninth BKA main. Brad Berg on his uh, second win. The only other person other than Wayne Felch to do so. That's a big deal. And um, we'll be back next week. We'll have some results from uh, this weekend's two day cage cup. We'll be back with lapping with Lippy, uh, tracking and packing with the loader, Jeff Eden. And uh, we look forward to. Seeing everybody there again. Um, be sure you stop by our page and like it if you haven't done so, and uh, spread the word. Lippy, you got anything? No, keep it real, keep it fun. It was good this weekend. We'll just uh, keep it going. And uh, Brian Rushing, I got your carburetor, so I'll be uh, sending it out on Monday. Yeah, absolutely. We may have Tim Lawrence on next week. Uh, he said he couldn't make it this week, so maybe we'll try to get him on there or whatever. But we're going to start doing working on our other stuff, too. We've got some real big stuff for 2017. Um, so just stay tuned. we got some cool stuff for you guys. So, uh, man, as always, if uh, and we saw some of it this weekend. If they were on the bottom, uh, you need to go to the outside. For sure. For sure. So, uh it's all good on the outside. That's it. So thanks a lot, everybody. We love you. We'll see you next week. Take care.